the reason I put this video together is to give you all an introduction to Small Basic, which, as you know, or is the development development tool that we're going to be using in CO116. So, in this particular video, we're going to talk about Small Basic, what it is, and the environment. Uh, we're going to write a small program and show you how IntelliSense technology works as you write it, and then we're going to save our program. So, very basic stuff here. But just to get you all started with Smart Basic, you may find this valuable. So let's get started. First of all, a computer program is basically a set of instructions that a computer can understand. And in order to write those instructions, you use a programming language. There are a lot of different programming languages out there. Small Basic is one of them, and it's not a, a uh, powerful full-blown commercial grade language. You know, you're not going to you're not going to take small basic and build a cutting edge, you know, game or something with it. And it's really just intended to learn how to program. So, when you take 116, keep in mind you're not going to come out of this course and, you know, be able to walk out and get an entry level job as a software developer. This course is just preparing you to get into other courses where you're actually going to learn practical languages for the industry. Languages such as Java and C Sharp and Visual Basic and C++. That said, the skills that you pick up in this class are going to carry over into all those other courses and also ultimately into whatever job you take because the things you're going to learn, the problem solving skills and the, the basic programming skills that you'll learn, are skills that you'll you'll always use no matter what language or environment that you're in. When computer programming first started out, there really weren't very many languages available and most of the ones that were were, were difficult to learn. And as programming got more popular and more and more businesses were able to make money selling software, different languages came out and friendlier environments came out to write code in. So we ended up with things like Microsoft Visual C Sharp and Microsoft Visual Basic and, and Java is another example. But they were still complex enough that people who wanted to learn how to program computers, they were intimidated by these languages. And it, it just sort of turned them away from wanting to learn programming. So Small Basic is designed to remove that intimidation and just serve as something simple to get you started programming. Now what you do in Small Basic is you write your program in the editor, which is the white window here, and you type your code in here. And you can use the toolbar to cut, copy, and paste, or to save, whatever you want to do up there. And then as you write your code, it gives you information in the panel over to the right. You can run your code by hitting the run button to test it out. When you hit the run button, it runs your program and it brings up another window like you see in the lower right corner, which we call the output window. So let's actually try this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Small Basic. Now this is what it looks like when I open it up. It has an empty space here to type in your program and the program isn't named anything yet so it says untitled at the top. I can resize this window and this blue area to the right is designed to provide you help. So you can just it just pops up help as you type things in. Now let's say we want to write a program that just prints out hello world on the screen. Okay? What we do is we type in text window now notice as I'm typing, this IntelliSense capability comes up. This is a, an aid to help you as you type things in. Not only does it tell you what you're typing and what it's for, but also if it pops up what you're interested in, notice I just typed in text win, I can just hit the tab key and it will complete it for me, which is kind of neat. Now the text window, if I want to tell it to do something, I use what's called the dot operator. If I hit text window dot, 
And notice here you'll see various words here with these little gears next to them. Those little gears tell you that these are commands that you can call. So one of the commands I can call, for instance, is right line. Right line, as it says to the right here, writes text or a number to the text window. And a new line character is appended to the output so that the next time something is written in, it goes in a new line. So it's like, basically, it's like typing in some stuff and hitting the enter key and bringing the cursor down to the next line. Now, if I double click right line, it just puts it there for me. I don't have to type it all out. Now, I'm going to put an opening parenthesis and a quotation mark, and I'm going to type in hello, comma, world, closing quotation mark, and a closing parenthesis. To test this out, I'm going to click the Run button, and this is what I see. It says, hello, world, and it says, press any key to continue. Now, I didn't put the press any key to continue in there. That's automatically given to you when you run a program, because when you press a key, it closes the program down, brings you back to small basic. Notice some interesting things here. First of all, line numbers. As I'm typing in my program, it tells me what line I'm on. That's really useful, especially if, say, you've got 30 or 40 lines of code, and it says, oh, there's an error line 26. You wouldn't have to count down 26 lines. You could just look and say, okay, let's get down to line 26. There it is. Let's fix it. The second thing you'll notice is that it colorizes things. So what's useful is that if things aren't colorized properly, it may be because you're missing something. For instance, if you forget the opening quotation mark, it's no longer that orange color. So when you look at your program and you see that, that should key you in that there's a problem because strings usually always show up in this orange color. So you can use the color coding to help you enter your, your code in the right way, basically. So that's all I'm going to do as far as writing code here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this program. It hasn't been saved yet because it says untitled here. So when I click the Save button here, it's going to ask me where to save the file. And I'm going to put mine on the desktop. And I'm going to select and type in my first program and I'm going to click Save. Now you can't see this in the video, but what it does is it puts on your desktop a file, a little icon, and underneath the icon it says My First Program .sb. The SB extension stands for Small Basic. Now the next time I open up Small Basic, of course it always comes up looking like this. And if I want to open up that file that I had saved previously, maybe I want to do some more work on it, what I do is I come up here and I select Open. And I find my file, which is right here. I click it, I select Open, and it brings the program up in my environment here. Now, notice at this point, there are two windows in, in my application, Untitled, and my program here. I don't need untitled at this point, so I can close that window. But it just shows you that you can have more than one program up at the same time. So if you're working on several programs at once, or you just want to bring one up to have it there as a reference, you can do that. And again, if I hit run here, the command box comes up and my program runs. And I hit a key and it brings you back to small basic. So that's really it for this first video. It, we talked about how to bring up Small Basic, write a simple program. We looked at the way to save a program and talked a little bit about the uh, environment. So it's pretty straightforward. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.